Chapter 5, Death Penalty. As a teenager, as I was forming opinions on various issues, I supported the death penalty. I supported it because I believed what I was told. Death penalty is a deterrent. Death penalty saves money. It's the Christian thing to do. An eye for an eye, a life for a life. The punishment fits the crime. I have always heard that the death penalty is a deterrent without any real evidence to back up the claim, and for many years I believed it. That was until I did my own research. Some people claim that the death penalty isn't meant to deter society at large from killing, but that it prevents the actual murderer from killing more victims. Nacy Moken, an economics professor at the University of Colorado at Denver who co-authored a 2003 study and a 2006 study that re-examined the data, said, Science does really draw a conclusion. It did. There is no question about it. The conclusion is there is a deterrent effect. He found that each execution results in five fewer homicides and commuting a death sentence means five more homicides. This, of course, assumes that everyone who kills one person is a would-be serial killer out for blood. This study also seems to be at odds with other more empirical data, which not only shows murder rates per 100,000 having dropped by 50% over the last 20 years, but also that the murder rates in states with the death penalty are an average of 22% higher than that of states without the the death penalty. If the death penalty is a deterrent, why are the murder rates higher in states where murderers are executed? It's possible that at one time the death penalty may have saved money. However, the figures I've been able to find do not support this claim. A report from 2011 shows that it cost California taxpayers $90,000 per year more to incarcerate an inmate on death row as compared to an inmate in general population serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. This additional cost is due to a couple of factors, mandatory appeals and what amounts to solitary confinement. There are also the cost of carrying out the execution, oftentimes many years after the conviction. I'll touch on this in more detail later. While the data shows that the death penalty is more expensive than life without parole, cost should not be a determining factor in whether or not something is moral or ethical. This brings me to the final two points that I once believed. While it's true that certain Bible passages do mention execution as being punishment for certain offenses, it also states, you shall keep far away from a false matter and do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. Do not kill the innocent. This passage seems to have passed by the death penalty advocates who claim the Bible as their guide. Since September 2014, there have been at least seven people exonerated from death row who had been incarcerated for at least 25 years. In September 2014, Henry McCollum and Leon Brown, brothers, were freed after 30 years because of evidence uncovered by the North Carolina Innocence Inquiry Commission. The Death Penalty Information Center reports both men are intellectually disabled. McCollum has an IQ in the 60s, and Brown has scored as low as 49 on IQ test. They have maintained their innocence since their trial, saying they were unaware they were signing a confession. In November 2014, Ricky Jackson, Wiley Bridgman, and Kwame Ajamu were exonerated 39 years after their convictions, after the lone witness in their case recanted and said that he did not in fact witness the crime. There was no other evidence linking the three men to the murder. In March 2015, Deborah Milkey had all charges from her 1990 conviction dismissed as a result of egregious police and prosecutorial misconduct. In April 2015, Anthony Hinton had the charges against him for two murders committed in 1985 dismissed after experts said they could not link the bullets to a gun found in his home when he was arrested. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, there have been 152 people exonerated from death row since 1973. 20 of those individuals were exonerated because of DNA evidence, meaning the other 132 people to be exonerated from death row had been convicted because of false confessions, unreliable witnesses, police misconduct, conduct, faulty evidence, etc. This alone should raise some questions not only about the use of the death penalty as a means of punishment, but about the accuracy of the entire justice system. But I digress. Considering that over 1,400 people have been executed since 1973, and 152 people have been exonerated in the same time period, it is probable that innocent people have been executed in the name of justice. If only one innocent person had been executed for a crime they did not commit, that should be enough to oppose state-funded executions because state-funded executions use taxpayer dollars to carry out a punishment that some find objectionable. To paraphrase a quote from Thomas Jefferson, 
reason, it is sinful and tyrannical to force someone to pay for something they abhor. However, is it really justice to carry out a punishment years after an offense was committed? One maxim of common law is justice delayed is justice denied. I contend that such delayed punishment, as we see in cases of those on death row, is in fact cruel and unusual punishment, and I dare say, torture. It forces the person who may or may not have committed the crime to wonder, is today the day I find out when I die? Just as it would be considered cruel and unusual to punish a 35-year-old man for an offense he committed when he was 5 years old, it should be equally cruel and unusual to withhold punishment for some length of time after a conviction. If justice is the goal of capital punishment, then a delayed punishment cannot be construed to be justice. Again, I point to the likelihood of innocent people being executed. The Death Penalty Information Center lists 25 people as either executed but possibly innocent or having been posthumously pardoned. In one case, the pardon came 94 years after the execution. It is statistically probable that other innocent people have been executed and that makes state-funded capital punishment immoral.